if you're looking to watch something gothic this weekend, we're talking about The Pale Blue Eye, streaming right now on Netflix, rated R, in a runtime of two hours and eight minutes, starring Christian Bell and Harry Melling. <laughs> If you already have it on your queue, queue it up. Find this new gothic whodunit movie on Netflix streaming now. If you do get a chance to watch it safely on the big screen in select theaters, I highly recommend that option also. This is not a horror film by any means, but it is a suspenseful murder mystery that will keep you engaged. The Pale Blue Eye is an intriguing mystery thriller set in 1830, adapted from the novel of the same name written by Louis Bayard. Directed by Scott Cooper, the film follows Detective Augustus Landor, played by Christian Bell, as he investigates a series of murders at the U.S. Military Academy in West Point. He is assisted by a highly fictionalized Edgar Allan Poe, played by Harry Melling, an intelligent and eager young cadet who was destined to become one of America's most influential authors and the originator of the detective genre. The film is visually stunning, with a great cast and some excellent performances, especially from Bell and Melling. And dare I say, kudos to Melling, who is and will forever be better known to the world as Harry Potter's cousin, Dudley. Holds his own to Christian Bell effortlessly. The story revolves around Landor's investigation into a singular cadet murder, which in turn escalates to more cadets falling prey as victims, all linked by their hearts being removed. The discovery of a dark secret leads them deeper into the mystery as he gets closer to the truth. The film is slow paced and builds tension throughout as we get closer to uncovering the killer's identity. With that said, there are some plot holes to point out that don't add up with the length of time Landor spends solving the crime, as well as his wit to solve the mystery. It almost puts you in mind of the buddy cop mystery movies of Sherlock Holmes and Watson, where one is the obvious genius and another just stumbles upon the right words to say. Not to compare the two movies too much, but you can see the major influence between the two. Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, it's like Sherlock Holmes. Both Sherlock Holmes and Pale Blue Eye are set around the same time period. Both use the template that when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And that is a quote from Sherlock Holmes. The cinematography is stunning. Colors are rich and vibrant, and I will give them that. And the production design is very well done. The film does an excellent job of creating an atmosphere of suspense and mystery. I'll link up to my description of his last movie, Antlers, that was on HBO that I did a review on. The colors in that also was amazing. The director really loves his stock contrast of colors or lack thereof to bring out the important elements in his film. You see those stark white snow as the backdrop, but then we see the West Point cadet blue uniforms laid against the snow, which brings the colors to life. Truly gorgeous costumes and rich colors in contrast to the bleak outside. The slow pacing of the story may put some viewers off, but it is worth sticking it out. I'm not sure because Christian Bale was also a producer of the film, he wanted more screen time or to show off his method acting, but just stick with it. He is a treasure on film. The performances of both Bell and Melling are outstanding and their chemistry helps to make the movie feel real. Some of the eye roll moments are when Edgar yells at Landor, and I mean a lot. Why are you yelling? I don't understand. What is this character choice? Why are you yelling? I don't understand. It was almost comical. In all my years of being an Edgar Allan Poe fan since my grade school youth, I never imagined him to be a man who yells. I don't understand why they're yelling. I thought he was like a lawyer going up against a jury, but there's no reason for that. Also, his accent got in the way of me understanding the dialogue. Listen, I understand getting a Southern accent is hard, especially if you're British. I'm from the South and I even don't have a thick accent, but I know one when I hear it and this ain't it. The majority of the cast is British and no one does mysteries like the Brits, my mom always say. But I would have rather he just stuck with a neutral American accent to make for the rest of the film enjoyable. Another yeller is Gillian Anderson. Why are you yelling? I don't understand. There's no reason for you to yell. Just, just speak normal. I love me some X-Files, no nonsense talking character, but again, the yelling and hysterics was a character choice that I didn't understand. Jillian is great upon great like the rest of the cast, so a little subtle voice would have been more enjoyable. Last but not least, 
I understand the sign of the times of Netflix. I can see why they let go a large number of their employees, which is unfortunate because they stack the deck with Academy winner after Academy winner after Academy winner and nominees for their original films. And that ain't cheap. For the love of all that's holy, please fix your audio. I mean, I'm doing the most with mine. Fix your audio, Netflix. Oh, I digress. Pay the boom operator and the sound person to pick up the audio. Every time I watch shows now of this caliber, I have to set my TV phaser on stun just to hear what they're saying and the music is a cascading parade outside my doorstep. Enough already. I want to watch your film, but if I can't hear your film, then I'm already bored. The only spoiler I will give is this. Don't rush too quickly to move on when you think the movie has ended. There are two endings, quote unquote, and both are a surprise and the second is an excellent twist. It was predictable, but good nevertheless. When you see the title scrolling, you will know the movie has ended. Starring Christian Bale, Harry Melling, Gillian Anderson, Lucy Boynton, Charlotte Gainsbourg, Toby Jones, Harry Lottie, Simon McBurney, Timothy Spall, and Robert Duvall. So if you've already watched it, comment down below and tell me your favorite part or if you thought the suspense was worth it. If you're on the fence with it on your Netflix queue, I say check it out. It's worth a watch. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you soon.